everybody. This is Laura from Smarty Pants Rockford Kids Art Studio, right downtown here in Rockford at 317 Market Street. Um, today we're going to do a project that you can do at home. Uh, a lot of us are stuck inside right now and it's the weather is not always so great. Um, first of all, here is our information in case you don't know who we are. And our website is smartypantsrockford.com. Okay, enough of that. Let's get to our project. What we're going to do today is a mixed media project. Mixed media means you use uh, a few different types of products when you're making your project. So today we're going to do these lovely trees. And uh, the supplies you're going to need today are uh, kind of a bigger piece of paper. Whatever you have will be fine though. And then I got two papers that are a bit smaller. I have a few different colors of acrylic paint. If you have tempera paint at home, that will work just fine also. Um, pretty much you can use whatever you have. If you even have um, some samples from wall paint, that will be fine. The colors I'm going to use today are yellow, red, white, blue, purple, and brown. Um, I also need some water so that my paint will work. I've got some plates and a towel so I can put the paint and mix it on the plate and then I have the towel to blot my brush. Um, I'm going to need uh, some paint brushes. Any kind of a scrunchy paint brush is what you want. I didn't pick my best paint brushes for this. I picked the ones I don't mind smushing and you'll see why in a minute. Um, something that will help you draw circles. Um, I have this nice circle template here. And I also have a compass. Now if you don't have uh, these things at home, one thing you can do is you can use like a cup and trace around it or something like a yogurt container or a cottage cheese container or a small plate or a bowl. And we're going to need a pencil, we're going to need some scissors, we're going to need some glue, and you may want to have a ruler or some sort of a straight edge. Okay? That's what we need. All right, I'm going to put that aside for now. And the first thing I'm going to start on is the background for my picture. So, taking the largest sheet of paper, I'm going to use uh, what we call cool colors for my background. And the cool colors are, anybody know? I know some of you guys do. Blue, purple, um, things that make you think of water, green, stuff like that. Those are all cool colors. Um, today I'm just going to use uh, some of this blue and some of this purple and a bit of white for my cool colors. So I'm going to put a bit of that onto my plate. Don't need that much, especially the purple because it's really concentrated. Doesn't matter what type of blue you have. I'm just using this ultramarine blue here today and a little bit of white. Of course, this probably isn't open yet. Oh, it is good. Okay, a little bit of white. So I just have a bit of paint on here, not so much. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is take my big scrunchy paintbrush, I'm gonna dip it in the water, and I'm going to blot it on my paper towel. And then I'm gonna start getting a bit of paint out, pretty much. And when I put it on the paper, I'm gonna kind of stipple it, which is kind of Crunch, 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 crunch. See how I go up and down like that? So I want it to be kind of scrunchy. And then every now and again, I'm going to add some of my other colors. So I'm going to take a bit of my purple and scrunch, crunch, crunch, crunch. Sometimes I'll have a bit of white because I like it to be a little lighter, especially for this purple. Scrunch that around, take some more blue. And I'm going to cover my entire paper with this. There's no kind of pattern or anything. You just want to make sure that you're going to cover your entire paper. So I'm going to do that real quick. Fast forward this part so that you don't have to sit through me watch doing this whole thing. I'm not smearing the paintbrush. 
I'm popping it up and down, which is why I'm not using a really good paintbrush because it kind of scrunches up the bristles. So I'm using a paintbrush that the bristles are kind of scrunched anyway, so I don't ruin a good paintbrush. So if you have even a stencil paintbrush at home, something like that, um, that's flat on the bottom, that works good. Or just get a kind of a larger scrunchy paintbrush. Okay, that should do it. Get all my spots filled in. All right, so now my background looks like this. Okay, now I'm gonna put that down to dry here. And I'm going to do my two other parts that I need to do. And I'm gonna use some different colors for that. So the first one, I'm gonna get my small piece of paper here. I'm gonna rinse my brush out. You need to get fresh water, you can do that. And I'm going to do um, my leaf colors. Okay, so I decided to get some, some new water for that because I didn't want the blue colors mixing with the, the other colors. Now my brush is nice and clean. I put this plate to the side. And now I'm going to take some red. And some yellow. Don't need too much. And uh, again, I'm going to take a tiny bit of white. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and use some of this white over here. Put it on this plate. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to pretty much feel figure. Uh, I'm going to pretty much fill up this whole page with these colors now. And I'm going to start with a bit of yellow. And I'm doing the same technique. Scrunch, 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 scrunch. And I like it to blend right on the paper. So when I put the red over the yellow, I get an orange color. Okay, so I can blend that as much as I want. I can add a bit of white in there to get a little bit more subdued color. I can have parts of it be really super duper yellow and parts of it be really super duper red. I'm just going to basically Scrunch my whole paper with these nice warm colors. These are called warm colors. Warm colors are the colors that you think of when you see fire. Now, all, everyone always says, there's always one person in my class that says, well, you can see blue in fire too, and that is true. But just try to forget about that for a minute when, I'm <laughs> when you're thinking of warm colors because the blue is not a warm color. That's the best analogy I can think of for you. Water cool, fire warm. Can green be a warm color? Yes, it can. If, if you know how to make green, it's a combination of blue and yellow, then you know that it could have the possibility of being a warm color or a cool color, depending on how much blue is in it or how much yellow is in it. So if you have more yellow, then Let's say you have a whole bunch of yellow and just a little blue, and it's still green, but it's a warm green. Or if you have just a tiny bit of yellow and a whole bunch of blue, then you definitely have a cool green. The same works for purple. Purple is made from blue and red. So if you have a more red than blue, it tends to be a warmer purple. And if you have more blue than red, it tends to be a cooler purple. Okay, so now I got my warm colors here, covered up in my paper. Oops, put it in the right water. That looks like that for now. And I'm going to put that right over here and let that dry. And then the last thing I need to do is I need to uh, get my what's going to be my tree branches. Oops, where's my brown? There it is. Okay. So now I'm going to take some of my brown and uh, I'm going to start doing the same sort of thing on this paper. My brush are rinsed. It's not so necessary that it's as perfectly rinsed as it was last time. So first I'm just going to take some of the straight brown and start flopping it on here. But I can make my browns different colors too with the, the, the paint that I have here. So for example, if I put some red in with my brown, that definitely makes a different color brown than it did 
without it. It's kind of a pretty color. I like to have a little combination here because you know tree branches aren't always the same color. It's easy to say they're brown, but there's a lot of different types of brown. So it's nice to have a little variety in your tree branches or tree, tree trunks, I should say. quick. And then with my brown, I'm also going to take a little bit of my blue and add that with my brown. And that will make it even a darker brown. <clears throat> That's how you get that nice dark. Put that all on there. So now I have a darker brown and a redder brown and a regular brown all kind of mixed in here. Which I'm pop, pop, popping it the same way that I did before. Oop, there's a lot of blue there. Might need a little more brown. Starting to run out of brown here, for a little bit more. You can always add your paint onto your plate, but once you put it on the plate, you can't put it back in the tube. So my advice is to use less at first, and then you can add more if you need to, and then you don't waste your paint. All right. So that is all done. So now we have our, our brown sheet. We have our sheet that's going to be our leaves, and we have our sheet whoop, that's going to be our background. Now the paint's put on here kind of thick a little bit, a little bit bumpy, so it's going to take a few minutes to dry, maybe like 15 minutes tops. So um, I'll be right back in 15 minutes, and then we'll start the rest of part two for this project. Okay, everybody, we're back. Uh, now we're going to do phase two of our cool mixed media tree project. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paper that has the, the warm colors, the orange and red and yellow tones, and it's dry now. If it's drying too slow for you, you can always take a blow dryer and blow dry it. That's what I did. And I'm going to put it face down, so color down on the table. And I'm going to get myself a few different uh, sizes of circles. So I always like to start with the bigger ones. I usually have about two or three bigger circles. Um, I'm gonna use my compass for this. Um, if you don't know how to use a compass, you can get an adult to help you figure it out if you have one. Otherwise, uh, like I said, you can trace around a yogurt container or a small bowl or plate. Um, so when you're, when you're tracing your circles, uh, what's important is you wanna try to get as many on here as you can. So that means you have to push them together so that they are barely, you know, almost touching each other, okay? You don't want to just put one here and then one there and then you run out of room because you left yourself no room. So I'm going to start with this bigger circle. I'm getting it as close to the edge as I can. Go ahead and draw my circle. I'm going to do two big ones here. So I'll put one right here. A little bit bigger. Oops, that's not the right way. Okay. Ooh, let's chop that guy right off. There we go. My. Turn it. There. Of course, you don't try. This is what we do it on the back of our paper. So if we make a mistake, we didn't mess up our painting. Okay. Then I'm going to do some smaller circles. And for the smaller circles, I'm just going to go ahead and use my template because it's easier and faster. And you don't have to watch me struggle with it. So I'm going to make a couple of smaller ones. I think I'm going to make about seven or eight circles, two of them that size. And I'm not going to get super duper small with these, but I am going to make some little guys too. All right, that should do it. Okay, so now you can see i got a whole bunch of circles on the back of my paper. So now i got to cut them out. Take my scissors and very carefully cut these out. Now one, one trick about cutting things out on a larger piece of paper is what you can do is, rather than having to hold the big old piece of paper the whole time, first I kind of cut very loosely around 
my circles. So I have not done it perfectly, but I cut out smaller sections so I'm not carrying around this whole piece of paper every time I want to cut out a little circle. I'll just kind of cut it into smaller sizes there, being careful not to go on my lines yet. Like so. And I will probably fast forward through this so you don't have to watch me cut out a million circles. But I'm just going to go ahead and cut these guys out to the best of my ability. If you don't do it perfectly, do not worry about it. See, I got one little circle here, another circle here coming. If you need help with your cutting, I'm sure you have an adult that can help you. Got another circle, so I'm going to go ahead and cut all these circles now and put them in a pile. Okay, all my circles are cut out, made a pile with them. Take my scraps of paper, put them over to the side. Now, the next thing I need to cut out are the trunks of my trees. So I'm going to get tree trunks first, and then I'm going to uh, cut some smaller branches. So if I count my circles, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten circles. So I need ten tree trunks. And I'm going to make a little bit fatter tree trunks for the big guys and a little bit skinnier tree trunks for the little guys. Now, if you want to, you can flip it over to the back, and you can use a straight edge. It doesn't have to be a ruler, but it can be any kind of straight edge. And you can start uh, marking off some, some lines here. Some of them are going to be a little skinnier. You probably don't have to do the whole paper. Like I said, you really only need about 10 of these. I'm just going to make some different sizes. And you probably won't use the whole strip. So I marked off some lines here, and now I'm going to cut the lines like so. <laughs> Stack of tree trunks. All right. So when we, before we get the branches cut, we're going to have to kind of figure out what types of shapes and how many branches we need and things like that. So what I like to do, and I always plan out what I'm doing before I uh, glue anyway, because it's always better. Um, so I got my, my background picture here, if you remember that. And I'm going to take first my circles and kind of decide where I would like to put them uh, on my, my paper here. I like to uh, kind of jumble it up a little bit so it's not all the same. Sometimes I put them closer together and sometimes I don't. So I kind of have a plan here of what I'm doing with my trees. Okay, it's going to go up here a little bit more though. Okay, so now I know that I need this many trunks. Sometimes uh, our tree trunks will go behind the other trees. If you notice, like on this big guy, the tree trunk here goes behind these guys. Okay, and the same with this guy. His tree trunk goes behind those guys, and this as well. That's another reason we don't paste first. Okay, and then sometimes it goes in front of the whole tree like this, like that. You see the different sizes? And then sometimes I put branches here, and sometimes I didn't. Okay? So, stick that up there for you. So I'm gonna to try to plan that out now. So I'm gonna get an idea of, let's see, this tree trunk's gonna be here. And I'm gonna cut it, and I know that's gonna go underneath that guy. Here's another tree trunk that can go over here. I can use part of that same paper there. This guy can go on top. Well, these are going to be some long skinny trees up here, I think. I'll put a real long skinny one up there. Him and him. I don't know why they're boy trees, but I just said it that way. 
They're boy trees. They're not necessarily boy trees. They can be girl trees. It doesn't matter. I'm switching this out. All right, this is going to go here. And these guys, I think I'll move this guy up here. Like that. And you can play around with how you want to organize your picture. There's no wrong way for you to do it. This is your picture. Um, let's see, this needs to be cut. And then if you find that, you know, all of them are too thick or something, you can always cut them, cut them smaller. I'm going to cut this guy here. I'm trying to do this rather quickly for you guys so that uh, you don't get bored watching me. Okay. And, uh, oh, this is going to be a very tall, very skinny guy. Oh, here's it. He's going to go here. I want him to go on top of here, I've decided. Okay, and then some of these smaller guys need a skinnier one. In fact, I think I'll make it super skinny. These guys down here. Okay. These two can share this piece of a little. That one there. This one here. This one can go here. Uh, oh, one more. I need one more guy. There, yeah, perfect. Okay, now I got my tree trunks laid out. I can't really show you because it will tip them. Um, but then I'm going to decide where I'm going to put my branches. So taking smaller pieces. I can kind of cut out uh, really any sort of a shape that I want. I'm going to do this like this. For my branches. So essentially you just cut some little, little strips there and you're going to place where you want to put them on your tree. So we have this all planned out, okay, as to where it's going to go before we actually glue it because if we don't plan it first and then all of a sudden we go uh oh i wish i would have done that differently it's too late then isn't it so you don't have to put branches on all the the trees but you can do as many as you like i'm going to kind of do a short version of this for you today so it won't take as long for me to show you You can do them, like I said, however you like. Right. This guy needs some right here. Okay. So I've got my branches laid out. And I've got my, can you see that? All laid out here. And the next thing I need to do is paste. So that's what you do next. You paste all the things on. Now when you're gluing, you want to start with the, whatever's on the, the first level, the lowest level, the bottom first. So anything I see on here that's underneath something else is what I'm going to glue first. For example, right here I have my branch under my tree. So I'm going to very carefully, I'm using Elmer's glue for this today. So you don't need a whole bunch of glue guys. Just a little bit. You don't need to go crazy. I'm going to slide that right in there. Okay, once I have that there, I can glue this big circle on top of him. So I can do that. Because that circle's on top of that guy. Mostly worry about getting the glue on the edges of the papers, okay? Now, this, the next thing is this circle here. So I'm kind of moving them over while I do it. And if you can't remember where you put them, what you can do is you have your have, have one of your parents take a picture of the the design with their phone so that if you move the pieces around and you forget where you put them, you can just look on your phone and say, oh, that's where I put that. These are tricks I learned. This guy here. Now, the little branches will be the very last thing I do, okay? Take this one. Doop.
branches here, and then I think we are just about ready to be done. All right, make sure you push everything down so that it sticks. And there we have it. Now, if anything hangs over the edge like this does, you can very simply just turn it over and snip off the extra parts. And there you have it, your very own mixed media painting. I hope you had a good time today. Until we get to be together in person, stay safe. Wash your hands. See you next time.